squeak out. Adamson there trying to save the catch. Excellent defensive coverage that time by Borders. Oh, man, that was a close one there, and we are going to run out of time in the third quarter as you take another look at it. Tip, 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 tip. Border tip, tip. <laughs> Peterson can't get a handle on it, and that will wrap up the third quarter. We will be back with... And they're not calling it Haiti. 12 minutes to go for the chance to take the long drive to St. Louis. 12 to 8, Ashgrove leads it and back with the call for the fourth quarter. My announcing partner in crime, John West. Corey, thank you very much. Ashgrove will have it at the 34-yard line of Haiti with 12 minutes to go. The Pirates lead 12 to 8, and they're looking at second down and 10. Floyd tossed to Landon Small, trying to break it to the outside. There comes the black and white of Haiti, though, and he's going to lose five yards back to the 39. Great defensive movement that time. Great angle of pursuit by the Haiti Indians. There you see number 76, Terrell Johnson, rolling small out, allowing the secondary to come in. That time, number 44, Danny Fain. Number 32, Jason Covington, in on the tackle for a loss. So it's third and 15 for the Pirates. Another all-important third down. They've seen a lot of these on the way to this day, Don. How many times have they converted? Most of the time. Here's Floyd looking, going for Shane Nicholson, incomplete. Peterson covering, and it's going to be fourth down for Ash Grove. Fourth and 16 from the 39 in the fourth quarter, leading by four points. What do you do? <laughs> You throw it to a Nicholson. What are you kidding me? The line of scrimmage, the 39. Are you sure they're going to punt? It could be a fake. I haven't seen one in a while, so I thought I'd call one. He lets it go, angles it away from Borders, and Buckley is there to down the ball at the six yard line. What a great punt by Corey Adamson. 33 yards, but that's about all he needed, and Haytai is backed up to its seven yard line. Couldn't have put it much better than that. Adamson drops the ball on the seven and allows the Ashgrove defense to come out and uh, really try and just pin their ears back and get some penetration on that line, see if they can't scramble Pete Peterson around and get something to happen on this side of the ball. Let's see if this crazy Haytai offense can get Ashgrove back on its heels, whether they start going no huddle and try to speed things up a little bit. And off goes to William Brant or Moore. William Moore, he's out to the 25. About the 26-yard line is where he stopped, and it's a first down for the Indians. Nice big run to start off the fourth quarter. You see Moore scamper outside. A couple missed tackles and arm tackles. You're not going to get Moore down that way. Finally brought down by Andrew Jones, number 22. First down at the 27 is where the spot is. Moore comes in motion, and it to Torrey Nelson. Across the 30 to the 32-yard line, a quick pickup of five yards. They've had some success running on the interior and exterior of this Ashgrove defensive line. They've just moved the ball very well in between the tackles, getting a lot of yardage. Leading Haytai 12 to eight. Second down and five. Toss to Nelson. First down to the 40, down to the 42. Torrey Nelson again on the carry. The 42 yard line. Well, one loss for Haytai this year to Class II Portageville midseason. The Indians had an undefeated regular season last year. They beat Cardinal Ritter in the sectional round and then lost to Tipton 45-8 to in Tipton in the quarterfinals, and then Lockwood beat Tipton tie. Nelson stops for no gain. He was stood up that time as the defensive line for Ashgrove really had a great surge and allowed linebackers number 52, Brian Locke, and number 40. Second and long. Second down for the Indians. Handed to Moore, coming in motion. He's got some blocking to the 50 and into Ashgrove territory and down at the 48. And that is right at the first down stick. 
So we'll see where the spot is. William Moore looks to pick up close to 10 that time. Sweet play, handoff to Moore as he comes around the right side. Nobody able to get to him until it's too late. Buckley and Landis that time on the stop, but enough yardage for a Haytai first down. Haytai scored in the first two minutes of the third quarter. Very quickly out of the shoot in the second half to make it a 12-8 Ashgrove lead. And the Indians back into Pirate territory looking for a possible lead. Here's a toss that goes to Jason Covington. To the 40, it's still going. 30, 20, he ducks back inside. 10, 5, and he is in. Touchdown, Haytai. 52 yards to the house for number 32, Jason Covington. No flags, Don. 48 yards, pardon me. My math, as always, is unbelievably bad. Take another <laughs> look at it. Sweet toss that time from Peterson to Covington. Covington breaks around the top of the screen, comes down the sidelines, going to make a great move back to the interior of the field to pick up a blocker, almost trips over the 10-yard line and dives into the end zone. That time, number five, Buckley there, but too little, too late. And, and the ball Haytai is back in this. The ball came out, but he was already across. Haytai on top for the first time. And they line up to go for two. Nelson comes in motion. Peterson looking that way, incomplete for William Moore. And the two-point conversion try, no good. But Haytai takes the lead with 8.58 to go. By out on top here for the first time. And the kick to Shane Nicholson. Back out to the 30 and down at the 33-yard line. Well, remember the Lockwood game Monday night. How when in the forget it? <laughs> fourth quarter, Ashgrove went on an 18-play, 72-yard drive when they were down by a single point. Now they're down two with 8.53 to play in this one. Never, never, never underestimate the value of actually having a kicking game in high school football. There you see head coach Lance Roten. Floyd looking and it's incomplete for Jeremy Nicholson. That one just too far outside and out of bounds that time for Nicholson to do anything with it. Floyd had a little bit of pressure on him that time. You see number 52 coming through, among others. That time the ball just gets a little bit away from him, just a yard outside. Too far out of bounds, though, for Nicholson. <laughs> By the way, that's Floyd's 26th pass attempt of the, of the day. Second and 10, 8.49 left. Floyd down the middle, picked off. William Brown back to the 40. To the 30, 20, and down to the 10. Willie Moore on the interception, his second of the game, Don. Moore appeared to be injured earlier in the game. His second interception of the day. And he is up, and Haytai is up because of it. William Moore, why am I saying Brown? I have no <laughs> earthly idea. I'm just glad to see somebody else screw up other than me. Take another look at it. Floyd drops back to pass, has plenty of time and plenty of protection. That ball, though, he did not see. They almost had triple coverage on Nicholson. Timeout, Haytai. Timeout has now been called by Haytai. As you see, the scamper that Moore did put a couple of outstanding moves on. Austin Nelson. He gets briefly away and is corralled out of bounds. He got away from Charlie Buckley, but Nelson gets out of bounds still at about the 11 yard line. And he hit one cameraman and nearly hit our Vince. Right hand side of the field, big number 79 out in front blocking for him that time. Number 79, 79 Randall Gilmore trying to help spring Nelson. Second down from the 11. The handoff to the motion man again. The ball pops out. And it's going to be covered inside the five yard line. And Haytai has a yard gain and third down from the two yard line. Covington. Touchdown, Indians. Touchdown, Haytai. 
Jason Covington's second score of the day. Jason Covington, two yard touchdown run. Two the yard. other one from 48 yards. This one is a two-yard run. Yeah, this one wasn't nearly as hard. <laughs> now, here is a big extra point because it's an eight-point game now. And a successful conversion here could make it a two-score situation for Ash Grove. For the two-point conversion. snap Peterson to Covington getting inside and he's got it great effort on the part of Covington and Ashgrove down by 10 742 to go 22 to 12 Haytai time Haytai has scored 22 unanswered points in the second half and the Indians lead it by 10 742 remaining Nicholson from the 16. Shane Nicholson out to the 30-yard line. Shane Nicholson on a return. Brought down by number 27, Brandon Peoples that time. And I tell you, Don, uh, this Ashgrove offense is going to have to uh, move the ball in a big way. Now time and the scoreboard is not on their side. And I think for Ashgrove, it's time, uh, like my dad always used to say, you dance with the one who brought you. It's time to get the Nicholson brothers and Corey Adams to in the show and release Jared Floyd's arm. And they're going to have to start eating up big chunks of real estate here. 737 left in this one. Swing it to Nicholson. He wants to throw. Looking for Shane. Coverage is good. And the pass just a little off and incomplete. Boy, a little trickery by Coach Roten that time. Brother to brother, number one passing to number two, Jeremy Nicholson to Shane. There's the screen pass from Floyd. Jeremy almost drops that, drops back and delivers a great deep ball throw that time. Unfortunately, it's just out of arm's reach for number two, Shane Nicholson. He's a little slow getting back to the huddle, maybe limping just a little, but staying in. brings the Pirates to the line on second and ten. Looking. Letting it go into good coverage again. Borders has been step for step with Jeremy Nicholson for a lot of the day. Senior that time all over the standout wide receiver for the Pirates, Jeremy Nicholson. That ball thrown out of bounds and a little too deep that time. And Don, here's another third and 10. Facing the Ashgrove Pirates, a third and long that has got a lot of the game written on it with uh, seven minutes left. Third and 10. Floyd, down the middle, there's Adamson, not quite incomplete. 22 to 12, hey tie. Fourth and 10. Floyd. Let's it go. And it looks like it's intercepted. intercepted. Picked off. Guess by who, Don? Well, there's William Moore. And I think that's who it was. Number 20, William Moore, with another big time hey tie interception. Take a look, Floyd's got a lot of time to pass. A little bit of pressure that time by 44, Fain. The ball kind of ducks and weebles and wobbles on him. And Nicholson didn't have position. Number 20, William Moore did. The third interception of the day thrown by Floyd. He had thrown four all year coming into today. Had not turned over the ball a whole lot. And today that has been the tail of the tape. Fourth interception. Now here's Tory Nelson. Yep. Four interceptions, three by number 20, one by number eight, Pete Peterson. So here you take another look. Right. Tory Nelson, number four, dives into the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing that time as Landis and company there on the stop. Gate of two. Gate of two on the play. William Moore's third interception of the day. 
That's what I said. You don't trust me, do you? Only as far as I can throw you. <laughs> Why did this press box then be away? <laughs> Nelson stopped at the 45. Just a couple of yards. It'll be third down and seven for Hayti with 6.20 and counting. He stays in bounds. Oh, my gosh. Don't look out. out. Look out. The ball. <laughs> I can't even believe this. What in the world was I that? I think Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown, number 51, the center. And the other 10 members of the Hayti offense were on two different pages. You're going to have a false start call against the Hayti offense. And watch this. If we can t take a look at this again, I don't know if we've got a replay or not. <laughs> ah, there's no replay. But anyway, I'll tell you. Pretend like it's radio. Cover your eyes and your ears for a second. <laughs> Marcus Brown goes to the line of scrimmage with the ball. There are 10 guys who aren't set. The center's the only one who set, snaps the ball. Goes, ball goes over Peterson's head. Nobody even sees it. Nobody even sees that the play's going on. Five yard penalty. Five yard wow. penalty, though, is all you're going to get for it. Well, they'll take that. Jeez Louise. I don't know. Talk about trying to, get, trying to turn the ball over in a hurry. We're still not ready. There's. Something wrong with the clock. They're going to ask that it be reset to 5.50. Yep. Clock could drop down to 5.45. Ashgrove will get five important seconds added back on. They'll take every second they can get at this juncture in the game. Third and 12 after that bit of absurdity. <laughs> uh -huh. From midfield, toss to Nelson. Makes it to the Astro 45, but it's not enough. Not nearly enough. Going to be seven yards short of the first down. Number 52, Brian Locke, and number 22, Andrew Jones for the Pirates. Jones in on the tackle. Andrew has played an exceptional game today. The 5'8", 155-pound senior has boosted again. I'm going to wait a couple weeks. I tell you what. The punt for McCrary is a good one. Away from Buckley, takes an Ashgrove bounce and back out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. So with 5.18 to go, Ashgrove must have two. The question is, with five minutes remaining, can they do it twice? One guy that's not in right now is Llewellyn Borders, who's been covering Nicholson. Jeremy, oh, now no. Floyd is thrown back to the five-yard line. Big-time sack, the second of the day by number 52, Antonio Robinson. Antonio Robinson, a defensive tackle for the Indians. The standout sophomore. See, whips down number three, Jared Floyd. Big loss on the play, a loss of almost 10 yards. They mark the spot to the eight. And it is second and 19 for the Pirates. Floyd lets it rip for Jeremy Nicholson. It's and intercepted. it's intercepted. But it's not William Moore. It's not. It's Brandon Peoples. He brings it back to the 15, and that's the fifth interception of the day for Hayti. And with 4.28 to go, that could be a backbreaker. Well, Jared Floyd has done an exceptional job this year as the quarterback of the Ashgrove Pirates. That kid has played. Four minutes by the time Hayti has to snap the ball again. Three-yard pickup, second and seven at the 12. Tackled that time by number 77, Mark Elliott, the 265-pound junior on the stop. But they have got to, got to stop this clock and stop this drive here. Coach Gilmore of the Indians probably going to play it fairly conservative with a two-score lead and under four minutes remaining. Look for the Pirates to be pawing at that ball on every play. 12. Back at the 17-yard line. Handed off to William Moore. Moore to the five. And to the four-yard line, and that'll be good for a first and goal for the Indians. Well, I tell you what, if this kid gets a touchdown to go with his three interceptions today, he's already got the hat trick in the interception column. He goes ahead. Yard line. Toss 
Austin Nelson. And he gets out of bounds at about the two, maybe even the one. Well, he was right at the pylon, Don, that time before Buckley and uh, a couple other Pirates could be there on the stop. That time, number five, Buckley, and number 43, Nick Cadotti, on the stop. Second and goal from the two. Nick Caduti. I have tried to get this poor boy's <laughs> name right. I tell you what, folks. I have tried. And I know his dad is sitting like two rows in front of me because he told me how to pronounce it on the way up here. So I apologize again. Second and goal for Hayti. Trying to put the final nail in the coffin, maybe. Moore trying to stretch it. Touchdown, Hayti. Touchdown, what an ending to an incredible afternoon of football for that young man. He reaches his arm out and gets a two-yard touchdown for the Haytai crowd, and they are some happy people. They drove a long way to see this one. See the sweep to the left-hand side. He's ankle tackled there by number 30, Bryce Cook, but leans forward, gets the touchdown, running behind the strength of number 67, Jordan McCrary, and number 52, Antonio Robinson. 3-10 remaining. And Haytai goes for two again. Yeah. Toss to Covington, flag is down. He's out of bounds, but we'll stay here and check the penalty. Referee Greg Reynolds. His crew will sort it out. Get eight twice and get even. But points have been hard to come by in the second half. Tanned it off to Landon Small and Atai all over that one. He's going to be marked at the 20-yard line, but Boy. what a great tackle, Brian Garner. Yeah, number 65, Brian Garner, that time on the play, absolutely snuffs out. This little trickery as they reverse it to Small, and he just pistol whips him down. Nothing doing that time. The Pirates will have to go first and 10 from the 20 here with 3.04 left. And the arm of Jared Floyd, I believe, is going to be put to the test now and how far he can sling it. From the 20. Down the middle to Nicholson. Brought down by, oh, he fumbled it. Fumbled it, and it's recovered by Haytai at the 35-yard line. And another turnover for the Ashgrove Pirates has almost sealed their fate. A team that has controlled the ball all. That absolutely is your story. Six Ashgrove turnovers today. Covington gets the call. Look at him drive. Has a first down across the 25. Big piece of yardage that time for number 32, Jason Covington, as he's brought down by Bryce Cook, Jeremy Landis, among others. That time as he drilled his way into the secondary of the Ash Grove defense for a big first down. At the 24-yard line with 240 and counting. I think that also eclipses, eclipses the 250-yard rushing mark today, too, for the Haytai offense. Toss to Torrey Nelson. Flag is down. He tries to stay in bounds and now goes out. And another flag. Two more flags at the end. Oh, Somebody might have got his face mask. There's a get a chance to see the ball on the 20 and a couple pieces of laundry for your afternoon. Oh, so they'll yeah. mark it one way and then mark it back the other way. There you get to take another look at it. Number 67, Paul Russ falls down. Number 43, Nick Caduti falls down. Number one, Jeremy Nicholson flies by him. And then that time the finishing blow over the top. Buckley was there. And I believe it was Bryce Cook, number 30, unfortunately, who had the late hit out of bounds. So both penalties are assessed, and since it was a dead ball, it stays first down, and it basically stays 10 yards to go. Well, that's unique. So, it's like it never happened. <laughs> Nelson going left. May take it all the way. He is in for the Haytai touchdown. 
Patrick, and what an unbelievable second half change this has been.